So in today's video, I will demonstrate how I use an extremely cheap modifier to light and shoot this image. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines, and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing, and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see some of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And for you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area of 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. However, in this particular video, I'm going to extend it a little bit further by about 1 meter, but I will not be maximizing this 3.5 meters anyway. So let's put it, let's say, at a shooting area of about 2 meters wide and about 4 meters deep. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the flash that I will be using. Now the flash that I will be using is this one. This is my Sony F60RM. However, you could use any flash at your disposal, whether it be an entry-level flash or an even more expensive flash. But the most important thing is that you bring out, bring down this one, the wide angle diffuser, so that you can get a bigger spread of light. Now I have it mounted also on the Magmod Mag shoe, which serves as my flash mount to this particular light stand. Now, you can see here, I also have two light stands with this thing on top. Here, one and two. What is this one? This is the Manfrotto Justin clamp. What this basically was designed for was to hold flash units here so that you can clamp it in any object or any, any bar like this one and have a flash mount. But I use it differently because of this one particular thing right here. It allows you to mount it on a light stand and a spigot. Now this particular light stand, you can see that I can have, I can mount it this way instead of vertically, I can mount it horizontally. And I just put my Justin clamp there because this one holds my reflector. Basically, the modifier that I will be using today are just two 20 by 30 foam boards that you can buy in any bookstore or any arts and crafts store. And I will use this one, this Justin clamp, to mount it and hold it in place. And now let's talk about the camera that I will be using for this shoot. So the camera that I'm using is my Sony A7R Mark IV with an 85mm 1.4 GM because I want to shoot a very nice portrait and this is my favorite portrait lens. However, again, you can use any camera that you are using so long as you have the proper focal length for a proper portrait, which for me is really an 85mm to a 135, or if you're going to do a half body portrait, a 50mm would be very good. Now the tripod that I'm using is from Manfrotto. This is the 055 tripod from Manfrotto, and this ball head is the RRS ball head, ball head the BH55. So I'm explaining everything because you guys are asking me in the comment section on the equipment that I'm using. And you could see here, I have my Atomos Ninja V, which basically records everything that my camera is seeing. So everything that you are seeing is straight out of the camera with absolutely no editing. The edited photos normally I put at the very end of the video. Now I have another monitor here so that my subject can actually see how she looks like before I take the shot, which now brings me to calling in my wife Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. All right. So. Coco again, of course, will be my subject, but babe, I hope you don't mind. I'll actually set up the light while you're there, okay? So I have this first reflector here. I will put it somewhere around here, which is basically about, you know what? I'll take out my measuring tape. So we're still trying to stay within the confines of the two meter um, shooting area. And if your space is actually just this big and your walls are white, this one can easily be replaced with a white wall. So right now, it is about two feet away from her, and I will have my flash right here. The flash will be directly towards the modifier or the foam board. Now, it's directly towards the foam board. I don't want it angled because if I angle it, it's going to hit the background, and we're going to get uneven light in the background. The background, by the way, is just a plain white background from Savage Paper. Okay, now this next modifier I will put in the other side 
approximately the same distance will actually be closer. Since it has a, a weaker light source, it's gonna be closer. It is only, sorry you can't see me anymore, but it's only about 14 inches away from her face. So by having it closer, it is basically reflecting a bit more light, getting a bit more power since our main light is actually facing towards the other reflector, all right? So let's take one test shot first. You know what, let's take one test shot without this one so you guys can see. Let's put this one here in the back. And let's take one shot. So I wasn't really able to talk about my camera settings yet. My camera setting is 1 over 250 f5.6 ISO 100. I have it on ISO 100 because I want the cleanest possible image. My other two settings, my shutter speed is so that I can stay within my flash sync speed and f5.6 so that I can remove all existing ambient light, which I will do now when I turn off my trigger and you can see everything's pitch black. The moment I turn on my trigger, it activates live view or deactivates live view so I can see what I'm shooting. So my flash power right now is at one half power. And by the way, I'm controlling everything using this one, the Sony WRC1M from Sony. All right, let's take one shot. There we go. It's slightly overexposed. So I will bring the exposure down by one stop. And don't you just love being able to control the flash using the in-menu system of the camera? Just makes everything so much easier. I brought it down to one fourth power and I think that's perfect. And you notice that the background immediately turned gray because I am not hitting it with light or well, subtle light, but even light. That's why if, let's say I will show you, if I point my light this way, there, look what will happen. I'm gonna get an even distribution of light in the background, which I don't want. So let's point it back towards here again. And can you move slightly going here, babe? There, okay. So if you guys are complaining about my cropping, the reason why my cropping is like that is because I know I'm gonna crop this anyway for Instagram, which is four by five. That's why I'm leaving a lot of headroom on top and the hands I won't really be including anyway in the shot. So there we go, beautiful. Now, my biggest issue is that I do love shadows. However, I don't want in this particular image any high contrast shadows. And that's why I have this other modifier now. Having this other modifier in the other side will basically open up the shadows. What it will do is that it will catch the light coming from this, let's put it this here first. It will catch the light coming from here that's bouncing this way and it's gonna catch it and bounce back and open up the shadows. So I will have it somewhere here and again, closer to the subject because again, once it, the light bounces, it loses a bit of power. And there we go, beautiful. Actually right now it's bouncing too much light. So I'll move it back. Again, there's a, th there's a thin line between beautiful, nice shadows, high contrast shadows and no shadows. I don't like shooting with no shadows because it flattens the image. And that's it, that's beautiful. Can you move slightly going here? That's it. Beautiful, simple, one light portrait that you can do in a small home studio using really, really, really inexpensive modifiers like this, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. And again, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.